Good morning, fifth graders, and welcome to your lesson on riding dem waves. Yeah, that's right. Miss Gonzalez and I are not in school today, and so you're getting a lesson on YouTube, which is why we can't call them riding the waves, because I'll get sued, so we have to call them riding dem waves. Now, today we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. You might say, Mr. C, why are you dressed like Obi-Wan Kenobi? Because Obi-Wan Kenobi is one of the greatest wizards of all time. He's not a wizard, he's a Jedi. Yeah, Jedis are basically wizards, okay? And we're going to talk about wizards, we're going to talk about lizards, and where they live in your brain. So let's jump right in to some of our learning targets for today. We're going to make connections between uh, being in control of your emotions and making good decisions. I mean, shocker, I'm sure all of you can recognize some of the worst decisions you've ever made were probably when you were feeling the most emotional. Uh, we're also going to name the benefits of making decisions when we're in our wizard brain. Those two things are very closely linked. We'll talk more about that in just a second. We're going to list some strategies for escaping your lizard brain. And I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Mr. C, I don't have a lizard brain. Yeah, you do. Okay, we all do. We all have lizard brains, we all have wizard brains, and we use them at different times. I'm even going to show you a picture, all right? You have a wizard brain, so do I. Look, my, my lizard brain is right down at like the base of my skull, right close to my neck. And that's because it controls my emotions and helps me to act quickly at times when I have to like run, scream, and get away from danger, right? So it's close to my neck because that sends messages to my hands and my feet so I can run and grab stuff and yell and scream, right? Your wizard brain is literally at the other side of your skull. Your wizard brain's right up here. Go ahead, tap your forehead. Can you hear that? Tapping my wizard brain. It's right underneath my forehead. Now, your wizard brain is the logical part of your brain. It's your thinking part of your brain. When you're using your wizard brain, that's like super Superhuman. I don't mean like superhuman, like superhuman. I mean like it's the human part of your brain, right? Lizards have the same part of their brain as we do in our lizard brain, right? They can run and scream and get away from danger and they can react to things and like go find food or get excited about stuff or get angry and fight with other lizards, right? Lizards can do that. What lizards can't do is think about the future. Be logical, solve puzzles, solve problems, and things like that. And so you have a wizard brain that's underneath your forehead that helps you to do all of those things. It helps you to plan for the future, right? So now, you, hopefully, you know where your lizard brain and your wizard brain are, and you know what they do, right? Lizard brain, super emotional, reactive, right? When you're acting in your lizard brain, a lot of times you're like, running away from something, or you're fighting something, or you're frozen up, right? You're reacting very emotionally. When you're angry, you're in your lizard brain. When you're really excited, <laughs> you're in your lizard brain. When you're being thoughtful, hmm, you're in your wizard brain. When you're planning for the future, ah, you're in your wizard brain. We'll talk more about that, uh, but really want to make the link between feeling these emotions, feeling like ex intense emotions, anger, fear, guilt, sadness, right? What do you think happens to your wizard brain? Well, if you're really, 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 really angry, what do you think happens to your wizard brain? Well, guess what? It literally shuts down. You stop using it. If you're super angry, you stop using your wizard brain. Think about it, all right? We've all seen it. You know when you're out at recess and somebody gets all angry? He grabbed my kickball! And, ah! Right? That person, that student, is acting with their lizard brain, not with their wizard brain. You've seen kids do things where you're like, wow, that kid is really not thinking about the future. Do something dumb, get in a fight on the playground, lizard brain. Because your wizard brain is shut down. If you were using your wizard brain in that time, you might go, ooh, this is going to get me in a lot of trouble. Right? Think about all the times you did something because you were excited <laughs> or you were angry, <sighs> right? And you got in more trouble than it was worth. That's because your wizard brain is turned off. Otherwise, it would be telling you, uh, <laughs> don't do that. Think about the future, man. Think logically, 
right? But when that shuts down, that shuts down when we're really angry, really scared, really sad, if we feel really guilty or embarrassed, right? Embarrassment, I think, is when I go into my lizard brain more than anything. You know, when you're like, oh, people are laughing at you or something. You did something dumb. People are laughing at you. That's when I feel my lizard brain, or I should say, that's when I feel my wizard brain shutting down more than any other time in my life is when I feel really embarrassed, right? Those strong emotions shut down the logical part of our brain. And making good decisions, therefore, is it's, it's so important that we can be in control of our emotions. Because if we're not, if our emotions are uncontrolled, if we're super angry, if we're super happy, right? If we're embarrassed, right? We are not accessing that logical part of our brain, so we're making bad decisions. Or it's really easy to make bad decisions, right? We talked a little bit about that too. Uh, and so how can you escape your lizard brain, right? If we are feeling these intense emotions, what are some things we can do to calm ourselves down? to start to wake up our wizard brain again. This is something that happens to all of us, right? Like throughout the day, we, you know, we feel emotions in different ways. And sometimes when we feel intense emotions, our wizard brains shut down. Well, how can we wake them back up, turn them back on? Guess what, guys? We've been talking about that all year. This is something that teachers want to do for students all the time. Do you know when your teacher goes, hey, why don't you go have a seat in the calm down corner? Guess why they want you to calm down? It's not because you're in trouble, right? It's because they know you're not using your wizard brain. They know that you need to turn your wizard brain back on and you need to get in control of your emotions to do that. These coping strategies that we've talked about all year are really just ways for you, for me, for anybody to turn their wizard brain back on because they need, or by getting control of their emotions, right? So deep breathing, right? Deep breathing helps you to calm down. As you calm down, your wizard brain turns back on. Journal writing, same thing, right? You take some time, you kind of escape your emotions a little bit, or you write about your emotions, which helps them to start to feel like they're under control. Your wizard brain wakes back up. Using positive self-talk, right? Getting rid of that shame, that embarrassment, that negative emotion about yourself helps that wizard brain to turn back on. Exercising, right? You're feeling those strong, angry emotions, right? You run, you know, run around screaming and yelling for a little while. You get a little tired. You get a little exhausted. Your wizard brain starts to wake back up as your emotions start to take a backseat, right? All of these mindful activities that we've practiced all year long are just ways to wake up your wizard brain. When your teacher asks you to use these things or you guys practice these things, it's simply practicing emotional control, which the purpose of that is to keep us in our wizard brain so that we make better decisions. Okay? Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. If you've got questions about it, you can ask me uh, or you can ask Ms. Gonzalez about it in your journals. And, and, and that's what we're going to do. That's what you're going to do for the rest of our time together today. I want you to answer some questions, and then you're going to tell me about some times and write about some scenarios. So here we go. So uh, uh, I don't know if your teacher can pause this screen so that these questions, these prompts can stay up on the screen, but this is what we want you to do today. You're going to get your journals. I don't have my journal. All right, get a piece of paper, and then you can put it in the journal box when you're done. Um, and you're going to answer these questions first. Answer these questions first. Why is it better to make decisions in your wizard brain than it is in your lizard brain? Think about those graphics that we went over. Think about the discussion that we just had. Why is it better to make decisions in your wizard brain than it is to make them in your lizard brain? And then number two, the second question that you have to answer. What is a strategy that you can use to escape your lizard brain? It's literally what we just talked about and what we've been working on all year. So give me some of your favorite strategies for escaping your lizard brain. Or maybe you never quite understood it that way before. And you were never like, oh, I never realized that they wanted me to calm down so that I could make better decisions. Yeah. Okay, there's some pedagogy for you, kiddos. You're learning about teaching and education in ways that you've never learned before. All right, and then finally, once you've answered those two questions, I want you to tell me about a time that you got really emotional about something and made a bad decision. 
can be a time you got really mad. It can be a time you got really excited, right? Kids make bad decisions when they get excited. I walk into a kindergarten room and they all go, ah! right? That's a bad decision. It's not because they're angry. It's because they're excited, right? We make bad decisions when we feel strong emotions of any kind. So tell me about a time you made a bad decision when you were really emotional. When you're excited, angry, embarrassed, upset, shamed, whatever. Whatever the strong emotion was. And then tell me, if you could go back in time and stay in your wizard brain, what would have you done differently in that scenario? Everybody can think of a scenario where they made a bad decision because they were feeling emotional. And if you could have went back in time, stayed in your wizard brain, stayed logical, what would have you done differently the second time around so that there was a different result, so that it wasn't such a bad decision, let's say. Um, and if you finish this and there's still time on the clock, uh, then you can go ahead with your normal journal writing. You can ask questions for Ms. Gonzalez or I. If you have any questions about this, we would love to hear them and answer them. Uh, or you can do some mindful coloring or some other mindful journaling. You can write to us about anything that you'd like, or you can write about anything you'd like in your journal for the rest of your term. Thank you so much for being present this time with me. Uh, we would love to continue to talk about this. And from now on, whenever you hear me talk about your lizard brain, you'll know what that means. And whenever you hear me talk about your wizard brain, you'll know what that means. And whenever I have to come out to recess to deal with somebody who's losing their minds about something that, out at recess, you're going to hear me talk about that wizard and lizard brain too. And you're going to see me using some strategies to help you get control of your emotions so that you can stay in that wizard brain. All right, guys, we'll see you later today.